lots of issues to get through tonight. I know this is a big one, but we also have the National Health Service to discuss. We have Dr Tony Shaw, two questions at the moment, a GP from Darlington and Mr Mahesh Debar, a retired surgeon from Cockermouth. If I can start with Dr Tony first, please. Do, Dr. do Tony, you agree you... that the NHS is used as a political football and a way to um, win votes by politicians? And Mr Debar to follow on. Well, uh, my question is uh, about funding. The West Cumbria at the moment has no emergency care. How will you fund the NHS properly? And would you be prepared to allocate more NHS funding for the rural and geographically isolated areas such as my area in Cumbria? Julie Elliott, funding an issue? Isolation well, an issue for I, many I, people in our region? Certainly <coughs> I and my party do not view the NHS as a political football. We created the NHS. <laughs> 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 we committed to it. Um, my, the colleagues on the panel may laugh, but that is where we are. We, we firmly believe in the NHS and we want to save it and we think it is under dramatic threat from this government and it won't exist in the next five years if they carry on doing what they're doing. The issues um, in Cumbria, the issues in Cumbria are, quite, um, are quite acute at the moment. Um, there's problems with retention and recruitment of staff, certainly on the west coast of Cumbria where... Um, where Jill is from, um, but that is for local people to decide how that is handled. It isn't for okay. me representing a city on the east coast of England Ga to, uh, to decide how the west coast should okay. sort their problems Guy out. Guy Well, it's fairly clear that Labour are trying to weaponise the NHS, and I think that is... I don't think it helps anybody. It, does, it rebounds on them, and it doesn't reflect well on the country as a whole. The reality of the situation is that in very difficult times, we've maintained the health budget between 2010 and 2015. Sir Simon Stevens has set out a, and he's the independent NHS chief executive, he has set out his five-year plan for the NHS. So this talks about the funding point going forward. That five-year plan requires a further £8 billion uh, of investment. Both the coalition parties have agreed that that money will be found, uh, interestingly, Labour, said where from in, interesting, Labour have not agreed to find that money. Uh, but we are in a position that we accept what he's saying. He is independent and he's taking it forward. Bear in mind also, just to finish, there are 9,000 more doctors under this government than there were in 2010, 7,000 more nurses and 4,000 more midwives. We've invested in the NHS repeatedly right. and kept the budget going. OK. Jill Perry, <laughs> West Coast. Yeah, the West, Co uh, West Cumberland Hospital in, in my area faces a lot of problems um, and recruitment is one of them. But one of them is the cuts that everybody, uh, sorry, uh, the problems that any, every NHS area is facing. The um, trend towards privatisation of services, introducing the profit motive into the health service and... Um, opening it up to competition. Okay. This, is co this goes completely against the grain of health promotion and investing in making us better, uh, or stopping us getting ill. If you put profit into us being ill... Chill, Perry, I must, I must just stop you there don't. for a moment. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, Philip Broughton. Yes, I mean, I think the NHS is a very important thing. <clears throat> and there's no doubt Ed Miliband is using it as a political football. He's the one who said he wanted to weaponise the NHS for politics. That's an absolutely disgraceful thing to say, and he should be ashamed of it. When? What we've got to do... <laughs> what we've got to do... You know perfectly well he when he said it. that. Yes, he did. He said it off the record to one of the journalists, he and everyone knows it. it. We've got to keep the NHS in the public sector free at the point of use. We oppose the NHS privatisation, started by Blair, your, carried your on by Cameron. Your leader believes in an insurance based health service We need to have... Like no, he doesn't. No, yes, he, doesn't. he does. You he can't said it cut, numerous times. You just can't cut a 30-second speech he's and say that's someone's it. policy when you have a debate about policy. Maybe you should try having some open debates in the Labour Party. It might do you a lot of good. <laughs> we need to have... We need, to, we need to have local services at the local hospital, which is exactly what I've been arguing for in Hartlepool. We need to scrap hospital car parking charges, which are attacks on the sick and are absolutely disgraceful. Okay. And we've got to end health tourism because we believe in a national health service, <laughs> not an international health service. <laughs> Helen Flynn. Yeah, uh, one, of the, one of the questions was about political football. Well, it was actually the Conservatives who said no top-down reorganisation of the NHS. Then the first thing they did, top-down reorganisation of the NHS. Now we're looking at a situation where Labour, the first thing they want to do is repeal the Health and Social Care Act. 
So it's clearly is being used and as a political football by the, the two but what are you uh, traditional. Well, well what, what we're saying is, and we said it months ago, we will provide the funding uh, that's been indicated in the five year forward plan because it, we must as soon as the, the deficit is cleared we must be reinvesting in our public services Every, you know the nhs is the the beloved service of the country it's envied by the world we right. have to keep that funding there that's why we committed to it several months ago interestingly enough the conservatives committed to it three okay, weeks Helen, ago Helen, another we... bit of political posturing yep. i feel okay You've all had your say there. Richard, what are the figures? Big issue, the health service, obviously. Well, they certainly, Carol, say, say it's got a lot busier. Because uh, if you have a look, uh, in the last three months of 2010, there were over 95,000 hospital admissions across the North East Cumbria and North Yorkshire. In the same period in 2014, that was up to just over 123,000. And that may help explain why some of our hospitals are missing targets. Eight out of, out of 11 of our hospital trusts missed waiting time targets in their accident and emergency departments in mid-April. We know our ambulance services have also struggled with demand too. But on cancer, there's better news. Latest figures, five out of six providers in our region did get people from a GP to a cancer specialist within two weeks, Carol. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, to our audience, anybody here had a, a good or a bad experience with the NHS? Gentleman in the front row they, with the crutch, aptly. <laughs> <laughs> we hope it's not because of that. Yes, it's uh, related to that. I've recently used the uh, services and uh, I uh, have knowledge of the services. And in the last five years, I was, when I uh, went to hospital, was uh, appalled at how they have deteriorated. I mean, I personally waited four and a half hours for an ambulance to turn up. Uh, the ambulance had no gas when I was uh, going to hospital and uh, I was treated by a nurse who told us my leg was broken when it was uh, uh, broken. It shows that the um, hospital uh, where I went was built for t t to handle 30,000 people. It's dealing with 60,000 people and we've got closures of a and &E, uh, departments all over the area. Something, the, it is in crisis now and something desperately needs to be done to, to halt this decline okay. in services. Gentleman behind in the blue shirt. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a medical student at Newcastle University and I'd just like to say about the staffing, about a third, about a third of GPs are saying they want to, they're thinking of retiring in the next five years. And I know a lot of the political parties are all very happy to say we're going to get more GPs, we're going to get more A&E doctors. It takes 10 years to train a GP. Mm. How are you going to get mm. all these new people in if you're not going to be able to get it in the next parliament? You need to be looking at getting more, trying to get the, the underfilled training positions. What are you going to be doing about that? A lot of people are being, obviously, treated by the NHS at the moment. Anybody had a, thank you for your comments, anybody had a good experience of, yes, the lady in the front row with the T-shirt the white t-shirt. Very briefly please. We had a very, very, very good experience of the NHS and um, we were extremely fortunate in the way we were treated. I had a son with cancer. His palliative care was absolutely excellent but it's because of where we lived. We benefited from community nursing which meant he could die at home and that was important to us. I am concerned however by the fact that that was a postcode lottery. We were one of the lucky ones. There are many who aren't. Okay, well thank you for those comments so far. If you've just joined us on BBC One by the way, you're watching Election 2015, a Look North special. You can join in at home on Twitter using the hashtag GE2015LN. We welcome your comments.